Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, looks like we are having a white Christmas after all. One of the worst, maybe one of the worst years ever, but we have a white Christmas. Maybe that's a sign of God's hope that uh, things are going to be better uh, mm -hmm. for the future. And you know, with a Christian, it's always going to be better because we have always something to look forward to. Yeah. Our heavenly home. We have that hope. Our family together. Yes. Um, something about the snow just makes everything look clean. You yes. Know, and pretty. Yes. So we had originally, of course, planned to do, uh, in addition to this live broadcast, an in-person come-and-go communion. Uh, the way we do it at our church, people come and just uh, at their own leisure. And uh, we were going to try to do it safely. But the weather has superseded that, so we're going to do this from home. So we want to encourage you at this time, uh, we're going to do communion at, in a little bit. Uh, whatever you have, if you've got grape juice and crackers or orange juice, whatever the closest you can get to communion, even if it's water, uh, the Lord will understand that. Uh, water and bread. Whatever you know. means the body and uh, the blood of Christ. Just, uh, yes. yeah, this, It'll be blessed. It's so the, what it signifies. Get those ready because we're going to do that at the end of this, this service. Yes. And so tonight we're going to um, do our Christmas Eve uh, Advent lighting. As you can see, we've got the four lit, and we're going to let, light what's known as the Christ candle, which is uh, usually lit on Christmas Eve and Christmas uh, for Advent and Christmas. And our scripture tonight is from John 1 5. Uh, Sandy's going to read uh, John, but the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This time we'll light the light candle. I read John 1, 1 through 18. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You know, we spent the last few weeks staying awake, looking for hope, offering peace, sharing joy, and embodying love. How can you imagine these daily acts of love bringing more light into the world? Each time you turn a light on or off this week, renew your covenant. To live as a follower of the light. That's a good idea. Yes, that's a, a good reminder. Good reminder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, because every time, you know, you turn the light off and on, it's just an automatic response when you go in a room. Even when the electricity is off, we find ourselves yes. doing that. So we forget, don't we? Yeah, that's a good reminder. Um, I was thinking about, uh, in, in preparation tonight, I read, read about a little 
uh, a Christmas play. You know, uh, you met, reminded me when we went to uh, when Bruce was in the uh, best Christmas pageant ever. Yeah, best Christmas pageant ever. Yeah, yes. he played Little Charlie. Uh, and how that that story uh, used uh, children that you know they thought was going to be a disaster and yeah. ended up being beautiful, of course. But, yeah. Uh, it reminded me of, of a story that uh, I read about a church that was doing a little Christmas play. And uh, they uh, there was one little boy named Wally who uh, they wondered who what he play he was going to what party was going to have in the play. And Wally was a little bit of a slow learner, uh, but he was very excited about being in the play. And, and so a lot of times he would be the one that opened the curtains or things like that. Didn't have a lot of speaking parts. Behind the scenes. Yeah. But this year, uh, she chose Wally to be the innkeeper. And Wally was so excited, the only part he had to remember was the part that said, there's no room at the inn. Mm -hmm. And so Wally practiced and practiced his part and uh, pretty much sat up all night repeating it over and over. He wanted to get it right, you know. And come the time of the play, uh, all the kids come in singing in, in the uh, normal uh, procession. And here comes Mary and Joseph to the inn. And uh, Joseph says, uh, can we stay here tonight? We're very tired and cold and hungry. And I don't know if it was stage fright or what, but at that moment, Wally, his mind went blank. And he's like, there... Uh, <laughs> There is, and everyone is on the edge of their seat. They're embarrassed for Wally. Uh, they, you know, just don't know what to do. And and uh, it seemed like eternity goes by. And finally, Joseph decides to kind of improvise and begins to walk off stage toward the stable. And Wally stands there and sees as he's walking away. He says, "Hey, there's plenty of room at my house. You can just come with me." <laughs> Well, you know, uh, the truth is That's right. we, we all need to make room for each other. We need to make room for God in our lives and in our hearts. Yeah. And, you know, the, we give the innkeeper a hard time for saying there was no room. Uh, you know, probably wasn't his fault that there was a, a large gathering going on in his community with, uh, you know, them having to do a census and all that. And he didn't have enough rooms, but... At the same time, we, we give him a hard time, but do we make room in our hearts uh, for others in our lives? And so one of the things I want to encourage us uh, this year is to think about those that we don't normally think about. Uh, we often, many of us who have families, we, we have our families and, you know, we, we don't realize that not everyone has that, do they? Right. Not yeah. everyone has that. Yeah. Well, we had a devotion this week. Uh, it was a beautiful from remember the upper room, yeah. from the upper room yeah. it was an, an 84 year old uh, woman and she was you know estranged from a, a lot of people in her life and uh, no her she children was pretty much alone but of course she had you know outlived a lot of her friends yes and so she was alone but she talked about how she doesn't look at the past that she lives in the present and the hope and the joy that she finds in Christ and reading and studying. and Yes. So, yeah. And we know uh, Christmas can be a challenging time uh, for people because uh, we it, it can be a blessing, but it's also uh, sometimes challenging because we, you know, people have lost loved ones. And uh, we have a service at our church. Uh, we had it last year and we didn't have it this year because of the pandemic, but it's called a blue Christmas yeah. and where we recognize not only the, the light of Christ and all that, but we recognize that there's a lot of people who's not having uh, the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, you know, for, for you, 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 we've talked about this several times, you know, growing up, the differences that we've had in our Christmas experiences. Right. And, uh, you know, my, uh, it was always a happy happy wonderful time and i know that you've shared with others and yes that there was some some, some difficulty in dark christmas dark christmases for sure. and so you know uh, and, and you know i can understand sometimes a little a little anxiety of uh, things you know oh you know what's going to happen 
yeah. it's all going so good. What's going to yeah. happen around the corner? So, yes, uh, and and being married to you has helped me be more observant of of those around me. That you know that not everything is always so wonderful for everybody. Yes. So we have to remember to share the light of Christ. Yes, not always a hallmark Christmas, yeah. is it? Yeah. Although we want it to be. Um, Although we do like those Hallmark Christmas movies. Well, I we, do. <laughs> we watched something last night. I'm sure, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Every once in a while. They're fun. They're lovely. Everybody's happy. And um, uh, and, and they, they usually your Christian faith. They're usually getting married in a church or they're singing Christmas songs about Jesus. And so I feel freed when I'm watching those to be able to share my faith with that so yes not that i didn't mean to get off on that and anyway. i enjoy <laughs> uh you know occasionally watching one myself and you know tonight as we're, we're sitting here we realize that we have a, a wide variety of people that we're, we're talking to we've got people that are church people and some that are not so churchy we've got uh people that are with families and some that are single uh some may be sitting by the fire uh, with a good book and others may be uh, setting with a glass of wine, you know, so we have just a hot a real big variety of people But we love each and every one of you and we're thankful for you and we know that that God loves you and yes. you are uh, on our hearts and our prayers yes. And we'd love for you to join us if you would in this communion time of communion um, We're just going to begin and you know, we have a little a little wafer and, and, and juice. Uh, and, and of course, if you have a cracker, a piece of bread, uh, whatever, it'll work and something to, to drink with it. But this bread remind us uh, of the body of Christ that was given for us. And, Amen. you know, the Lord Jesus, uh, he uh, came and dwelt among us as the scripture was read tonight. And I'm reminded of the fact that, that it says that he uh, dwelt, that he tabernacled. Uh, one, one, verse, uh, one Bible verse says he tabernacled with us. He, he, uh, he came and I think the, the message says that he moved into our neighborhood. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That God who was so far away from us became close to us and moved into our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so Christmas is not just about... A little baby that's only part of the story but it's about the life the birth the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus and so the resurrection shows us that there's hope for all of us and all of it comes together and, and you know we, we tend to focus on one and different holidays and in the church we have different holidays uh, different in the Christian year different things that we celebrate but it's really a, a continual cycle. Mm -hmm. Every year we start all over. Mm -hmm. Advent is just the beginning of the Christian year. Mm -hmm. You know, really, it's not the end. In, in, in the secular calendar, this is the end of the year. But in the Christian calendar, it actually starts with the Advent, see, which uh, usually in around December. And it's just the beginning of, we, you know, like year A, year B, year C. Uh, so we're beginning a new cycle. We go into the season of Lent and the season of Easter and uh, there's Pentecost and, re you know, all that. So just a lot all to celebrate. All the things that we recognize and celebrate, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so let us remember, it's not just, the, it's not the end as we come to the close of this year. But it's the beginning of something new. 2020 has been a tough year. It's been challenging. Some of us want to put it behind us as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. 21 will come with new challenges, but also great opportunities. And so as we remember this, remember the Lord Jesus gave his life for you. The body of Christ given for you. And he shed his blood for you. The blood of Jesus given for you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Okay. Well, we're going to do our song. Yeah, we're going, we're going to do cider. <laughs> I yeah. wonder why you was looking at we, me. <laughs> we're not closing. We're going to close communion. Uh, I'm going here. to pray over the communion and, yes. and, and this time, and then we're going to sing. We're all going so to join us for a song before, yes. before we leave. 
Lord, I pray you bless this time and forgive us of our sins and lead us in the way you'd have us go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So join us in Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, wish you a merry christmas and uh we love you all we pray the light will continue to shine in your heart mm. we're thankful throughout the year and especially since march um those that have uh, joined with us and and given us words of encouragement to mm -hmm. keep going and uh, sometimes we wondered you know are, you know are we reaching people and so we 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 hope that we've been a light for you and and we pray that we can continue to do that. And we just love you all and Merry Christmas. Yes. Yes. So let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Father, tonight I want to pray for each and every one, Lord, tonight that is able to hear our voice and to see us or, Lord, to join us in some way. And I want to pray, Lord, for those tonight especially that this is going to be a tough year. It already is. But... As we think about a Christmas, Lord, that uh, there's something missing there, Lord. I, I realize how tough that can be. But, Lord, I ask you that your Holy Spirit would be present. And I know you will, but may they sense that presence. Lord, and we know that you walk among us like you walked among the seven golden candlesticks in the book of Revelation. You light us, Lord, like you light the candles here the Advent candles. And as we think of the Christ candle, we're reminded, Lord, how Jesus, Lord, is alive. And that hope, that resurrection, gives us hope. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And so, Lord, tonight, we give you thanks for that wondrous birth, that wondrous star, and that wondrous light. And we hope and pray tonight, God, that we can continue to carry that light 
until you can take us home. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you all, and you all have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.